Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club for people who hate reading. That's this week we're doing the movie Swordfish. <laughs> I picked for the old guy. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Ryan Preston, and the old guy. Hey, the old guy's here. This week for Rob, I picked the uh, Swordfish. So, uh, who has the description of this lovely movie? That would be Secretive Rob. renegade counter terrorist co ops the world's greatest hacker who is trying to stay clean to steal billions in U.S. government dirty money. Okay, let's try that again. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> tough room. <laughs> Yeah, a tough audience today, well, huh? Since, uh, yeah, secretive just, just put a little emotion I it. mean, you know, get that radio announcer voice going. All right. Uh, anyway, my pi- uh, this was picked for me. <laughs> Should we turn this around and start my, over? My, nah. Hey, let's let's just go down the crazy trail. Hey, yeah. Let's just go down the crazy trail. Get more people watching. <laughs> you know, more people more people will watch if we're if we're crazy than if we're uh, normal. So Guaranteed. Uh, so I yeah, picked anyway. so old I picked guy this, starts. So I picked this movie for the old guy. So uh, what do you think about the movie, old hey, guy? Uh, Swordfish is is um, been one of my favorites uh, since I saw it. Uh, timing for this movie couldn't have been worse, of course. Uh, it happened right before uh, September 11th. Yeah, like four or five months. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, they actually stopped um, showing the movie in the theaters due to the one scene where there was the explosion of the tower, uh, and uh, oh, wow. they pulled it. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I hadn't realized that until I started reading the notes a little sensitive. bit. It's sensitive. But anyway, yeah, uh, in, in for that. So the timing was poor on the movie, but I really enjoyed uh, the characters. Um, uh, I, I I like John Travolta, surprisingly enough, no matter what anybody says with him. He's, he sure is quirky, but the guy can act. Uh, he makes a great you know, bad guy. Halle Berry at, at that stage yeah, in her career was there. as hot as, as a woman could get. And uh, Hugh Jackson had to have a start somehow, and... If I was to pick the one character that I think maybe was uh, the the not the best choice for the role was Hugh Jackman. Yeah, uh, I, I he, he might have been hair old to play the position he played, but I understand he spent some time in prison and, and that whole story. Um, not to mention a hair too in good shape. Yeah, no, no hacker is yeah. in that good of shape. No, well, exactly. But he was in. Um, but he, the look only, at the guys. The only the justification the was the only justification yeah, yeah. was he was in prison for eighteen months and couldn't touch a computer. So maybe he had nothing better to do than get out of his parents' basement and exercise. <laughs> yeah, I but, would have loved to see the before picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> they had a pot belly, nerdy huge neck fat beard. man, just all yeah. skinny as shit, just spindly and. Yeah. I, so I, I, I so if there was a miscasting, there's a miscasting. I gotta it, say the tagline from this movie should have been "Overkill is not enough." You yeah. know, well, uh, you, know. you mentioned that there's explosions, but I really, really enjoyed the opening uh, sequence. The opening sequence. Oh yeah, yeah. it was it was oh, yeah, yeah. robbed the uh, the bullet time from Matrix and yeah. Yeah. Bes- besides the fact oh. that well, the that, conversation well, was very Tarantino. No, screw screw the Dog Day Afternoon thing. Yeah, it's Tarantino, oh. ass, but the screw Dog Day Afternoon. It's a horrible mo- movie, but the plot is similar to to how the this movie was. Right. So that's where I give him credit in that, but but the way that they did that bullet time mm-hmm. was really 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 well done. Yeah. And I remember I was the only one in the theater who actually was able to say something after that. <laughs> and I all I said was do it again. Yeah. Because <laughs> that was really cool for that time. Best use of it bullet was, time since the Matrix. Yeah. It was and the last the most, time it was good. It was the most complicated visual effects Warner Brothers <clears throat> in Warner Brothers history at that point. And it, I believe it. Yeah, and, yeah, and it really, it really showed to the audience too. That was badass. Yeah, it, yeah. it shocked so many people that opening especially, explosion. Oh, yeah. Especially since uh, it was like one sweeping shot. There wasn't yeah. a whole. There wasn't any cuts in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It and was then, awesome. and then the ball rolling yeah. right up to Hugh Jackman. He sees his face it's reflection. Yeah. The reflection in the it was really well buried. timed. And then all of a sudden to go back three days right at that moment it was really well thought out. Yeah. Yeah. For that type and, of thing, and you know, it's funny. Even having watched this, of course, it's been many, many years since I watched this movie. In some respects, I forgot the twists and turns in the plots. And yeah. it was seeing the movie the first time; it was almost impossible to stay up with all the twists and turns that this terrorist 
John Travolta was coming up with. It was incredible. The you know? best part about that is they explained it the entire time and you never caught on. Yeah. Like well, he even said what he was doing. It's like he talked about how Houdini yeah. made the elephant disappear in front of the audience. By misdirection. And he, and he, yeah, misdirection. <laughs> and it was like, hey, and that's what the whole thing was. It was all misdirection. Yeah. And I, I I really enjoyed it, you know. And uh, like I said, other than Hugh Jackman. And that um, really. Don, uh, uh, Don Cheatham. Cheadle. Cheadle. Great you know, role. Uh, Great the, role. And the one that, thing that I got to say about the movie that has always bothered me is. And, and I'm going to sound a little bit like John, but the color spectrum, the grainy, mm-hmm. almost yeah. kind of dark undertones mm-hmm. throughout the film, I, I believe it takes away from the film to me. Because has, they're yeah. using such good CG in there and everything, you, you want it to be a little bit more, uh, I, I don't know, I guess pop, you know? Mm-hmm. It, it it's, yeah, it's a, a very, visually. Like, it's a very green. Yeah, it's kind of grainy, dark. I guess. Dark. Colors. The only thing I can think of is because at this time they're trying to make, you know, the, the guy was elite hacker, so, you know, had to have this kind of weird techno babble bullshit, just like the, the, the techno soundtrack. But this movie had more bad techno babble than any movie I've seen in a long time. My favorite thing was it has a 128 bit encryption, but you have to bypass the firewall on here, and it's just like, that doesn't actually mean <laughs> anything. What the hell? Yeah, that, well, man. Yeah, this, <clears throat> this movie. Yeah, this is 2001. It, there's, <laughs> there's no way if you look at this movie on paper, it should work. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, every every action scene in it is obligatory. There, everything related to an action movie, it was all the obligatory scenes of uh, he doesn't want to do it at first, and then they talk him into it, and then you know later on there's some shit, and they got his daughter, and then he's got to go after that, and it's just, shenanigans. It's I, shenanigans. It's the usual action movie shenanigans, yeah. but they. They they did good on a on a couple of good things. One the 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 character of John Travolta, yeah. who's sort of a bad guy, ends up in a, in a from a certain perspective becoming sort of the antihero of the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. it, with the with the it, because he doesn't really feel like the bad guy got away. You kind of wanted to see him succeed at a certain point, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's the way so, they're saying is John Travolta plays an amazing bad guy. He's yeah. I yeah. think this is definitely Especially in this film. This is definitely, I think, a character-driven movie, and it's all driven by Travolta's character, who, who you love to hate, but he's still, you know, like an amazing character. Yeah, like yeah. right. I, like and this, and it, this this movie got torn the hell apart by the critics too. Oh, yeah. I, it, yeah. I think partly because he was coming off of stuff like, like, uh, like, like, uh, what's it called, um, uh, Face Off, and yeah. and you know, just that kind of dog shit movies that he was doing. Uh, old, I wish you could think, think of another. I mean, he did like, like yeah. three or four. Yeah. Really terrible know. movies in a row, and uh, and and everybody I think felt like this was just another line in that in that crazy movie. But um, I don't know, something about it seems to really work. I know, I, I I I agree with you on that. I think he got really uh, downplayed for this film, and it really is true that we're, that he was coming off the back of. Let me pull up some of them. Uh, yeah, Battlefield or two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the worst. I mean, yeah. uh, the gen- the general's daughter wasn't a great role for him. But it wasn't a really bad one. I but think the film Battlefield. Wasn't that good. I think Battlefield Earth is what almost killed his career. Battle, yes. Battlefield Earth, yeah. The yeah. General's Daughter actually yeah, wasn't Broken bad. Arrow. That yeah. movie it was terrible. Bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. But it didn't go it wasn't well. great. It was yeah. the yeah. Broken Arrow was entertaining. It was a lot better than Battlefield Earth, but not by much. Yeah, Broken Arrow was entertaining because uh, oh man, I don't know. Look, as soon as he uh, as soon as he gets away from from John Woo, everything yeah. becomes better. Better. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Good but it, yeah, but I agree with John. Is I mean, Battlefield Earth was almost the end of his career. When I saw it, I thought yeah, it, it really did was. end his career. They they because that movie was made and they didn't know yeah. that they were making a comedy. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Th- I don't even think nothing like be, making an accidental comedy. Huh? I don't think you could be stoned and find this movie good. Oh man, and, and they were taking it so Battlefield. 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 Yeah, Battlefield. Battlefield. No, no, yeah. oh, yeah. this movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love, I love, uh, <laughs> really, sort of I love the scene. I love the scene with the t- the British TVR. I've sw- have we switched movies? The, no, Swordfish. No. Oh, okay, we're back. The scene, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The scene with the British, the scene with the British TVR with the, you know, right. they had those uh, Serb- yeah. suburbans come up side by side, where he randomly has enough time to walk out of his car, open his trunk, and assemble like a squad automatic weapon, have time to load it, and fire. And somehow people did; they, they still didn't kill him. You know, I was just more amazed by the fact that I mean, everybody on the street was just kind of like, eh, there they go again. 
You know, I mean, literally, yeah, you it's look normal. at the, look it's at the LA, bystanders right? and the vehicles <laughs> yeah. around, like, Happens. nobody really gets out of the way. Why do you think Ryan's got a job? You know? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it really happens. <laughs> he just picks up dead midgets. I'm not a, I'm not a coroner. <laughs> oh, by the way, I love Vinny Jones' role in this movie. Even though yeah. it was smaller, I, I wish it was bigger. I really loved yeah. his character in this movie. You, you know, the other guy that was really mis uh, role as far as I was concerned, was Sam Shepard's role as a senator. I thought that was yeah. the worst acting he has ever done in his career. I love how he ended, though. What are you going to do with that? Pap! I, uh, yeah, I mean, but really. It's like, uh, really? The guy's pointing gun at you. I, I thought it was terrible. Yeah. I, I really thought it was terrible. Yeah. You know, and uh, it totally overacted. I, I would have thought this guy had never had a movie career in his life at all as bad as he acted in this movie. On the other but hand, I, mean, I, I actually thought he acted like a senator. <laughs> you know, the one that yeah, always kind of yeah. seemed a little thrown in there and basically the only thing that really he did was just basically kind of a British bad guy is Vinnie Jones. I mean, really? Yeah. You yeah. Know, he did so did. great with Guy Ritchie films, but... In this one, it just kind of felt that he was he playing the same right. character and just yeah. tossed in there. Okay, yeah. be, it, it, it was, be a tough British bad guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, of course, that's that's what he's that's what he's good at. You know, when when you see that character, what you're what you're in for. Yeah. Um, the thing that really elevated this movie, though, was was Don Cheadle and and Halle yes. Berry. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah. That Except turned it into like a just like a like a good old fashioned Bond movie kind of kind of feel. You know. Yeah, but I really don't like I don't like her playing this kind of whorish. I'm a good little girl, but I'm a horror character. Like Catwoman. And that's pretty much what she played in this one. And then you try to find out that, oh, she's supposedly DA, which she turns out DA, not to be. She's but, not you know, DA, and, like, right, right. But she there's... didn't know that until the end. And, yeah, but uh, she really had, other than kind of a, a little bit of a motivator, she really had no other purpose in the film. No, no, not she, really. And, well, and you know, the yeah. movie the movie takes a couple of leaps as far as, you know, here, uh, like, like, like Rob brought up. Give me half a mil. Well, I mean, the, the, her role, her, her role's kind of like I think the suitcase in Pulp Fiction. It's really, she, it's really there just to drive the film and add more misdirection. Or just, yeah, just to tie everything together. It seems like because her mm. her character didn't really have any, have any depth. There was no development of her, yeah. her character. No, not really. She just got the the brunt of everything, including being hanged at the end. And at the, even then, it, I was like, oh my god, they're hanging a black person. I'm surprised more people weren't pissed at that. No, wow, I see, the, you know, I didn't even. I didn't even think, think that. about that either. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, okay. who's the little uh, white guy in the room? All right. So, moving along on that one. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, your, your hate mail to <laughs> me, and I'll respond. Well, no, I'm just surprised they do it just because of all this, the, you know. That just surprised me. Yeah, well, it's 2001, John. We could still do things like that. <laughs> we, weren't so, we weren't so PC then. <laughs> we could still do things like that. <laughs> But uh, uh, address yeah, all your hate mail I, too. Real flicks or news. <laughs> address to me. I'll respond. I will be yeah, glad to James. He's on, I was, was going to say good I, guy. I was going to say Sam Shepard's role. I really think it was more just to cover the basis of why why John Travolta's character was doing anything. You know, anybody could have played that role. They didn't need Sam Shepard to do yeah. a poor, a and he did a poor acting job as far as I I'm actually concerned. thought he he acted like a crooked mm. senator, which yeah. is being overacted, and you know, and I don't think you know. Gary Busey was initially going to be the senator. Really? Oh, that would have been really? perfect. Yep. Him with yep. those giant chicklets they call yeah. teeth. <laughs> Can you imagine? I think he would have done a better job. They and I had, don't care for the guy a whole hell of a they lot. They would have had to pay him in coke. <laughs> but no, I uh, for me, I, I really had a good time with the movie. Too. This is one of those movies I consider fun with the twists and the turns and the explosions and the guns. And and uh, and, and uh, John and I had uh, a little fun trying to identify some of the guns that were that were actually used <laughs> in the movie, fun? the real guns. And yeah, so we, we looked those up and that was kind of neat. And so, you know, there was a whole bunch of things that it was just fun for me. I, I, I got to say, um, there's one thing I was going to tell you about when we looked at sick. this. Uh, I found out a website called, Inter was it? Uh, International Movie Firearm Database. Mm -hmm. oh, and it yeah, lists a that. great deal of uh, weapons used in movies. It's it's a great way to see if the people are full of crap because the people on that uh, on that website are very very good and picking yeah. up guns. Well, most of the time they are full of crap on the film. Right. I I gotta say though the, the few things there's that, some good companies handling those. I, so. I I gotta say though on this movie I don't remember it feeling as aged because I've seen it a bunch of times since like theaters and the thing mm -hmm. that really aged it were you know were the computers with cell phones the monitoring room by the the monitoring room used by the FBI 
Um, yeah. Well, have they, you seen Hackers lately? Wow. Oh, yeah. You want to really d- date something? Man. We have lots of war games, man. Check out the old school floppy oh, Come on. It's Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. Right. And you know what? And, and I think you pointed out, Jonathan, probably one of the problems with any kind of movie oh, totally. that date goes far back that's <clears throat> supposedly high tech. It, it doesn't hold up very well as you start going, you know, a decade and, and you start getting further out because <laughs> technology t- changes so quickly and so fast. It does. You, you, you that... want to know the, the one thing that I noticed is they did it in Hackers and they did it in this movie is when they load up the computer, when uh, Hugh Jackman's uh, character was going into that computer to find the worm, you notice how they had this really weird kind of trippy interface? Nowadays, they actually show command prompt. They actually... You know, that was the one thing I noticed is nowadays they're a little more, more honest some ways. Yeah. Well, it's honest. Yeah, a little more it? research is done as opposed to just uh, winging it. Yeah, well, making yeah. sure they're pounding on a wow. keyboard right. and assuming that you're hacking. They wanted right. to wow the audience that this guy was a great hacker and all that. And in in the notes, the details, it was really funny. They even they even brought up how, how that the. the uh, <laughs> the, oct, the ox numbers on the IPs were comp- completely wrong. And, and instead of the two five five two five five two five five dot zero through two fifty, they went into the three hundreds, which doesn't exist. <laughs> so oh, yeah, the even today, mask. it doesn't exist. So, so anyway. I, I thought some of the computer stuff was good, but some of it was really like you know jargony, like just to, just to make sound like the movie, you know, like in two thousand one, it was like oh, okay, this makes sense, but now you're watching it going, wow, they just lied to me. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that, but I mean, you know, when I watch a movie, when I watch a movie like this, no. I, I just assume that when they're throwing all that stuff out, you're full of shit. Yeah, literally. I mean, y- y- yeah, yeah. you can pick out bits and pieces that may that yeah. can be the truth. Sure, but when they start, but who cares? Jumbling it all together, you just yeah. have to assume it's they're part... full of shit and enjoy the movie. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah, and, well, and look, bottom line, right. this is this is a fun action Fantasy. movie, you know, and it was coming off the tales of the of the 90s, which was just full of good action movies. Um, the Matrix was a, a two years before this, which wasn't very long. People had just barely started to use this whole bullet time technology thing right. and, and add a lot of uh, uh, computer-generated graphics to their movies. Um, but we, it was still so infantile that you still had to blow some shit up. You know what I mean? So action movies from the 90s still hold up because it looks really tactile. It looks like this shit actually happened. Yeah. And there, because I, I still think it was because of the time in the 80s that it was just a good time with explosions instead of trying to make something, move, move, you know, an action movie generally. Is yeah, well, the 80s was the 90s movies except too much day glow. <laughs> well, the thing that I got to say about, you know, this movie that always kind of baffled me was the, the proficiency that Hugh Jackman's character had with a rocket launcher. Right? That was... How about that? That was you actually know, that in was my notes. really impressive that he just kind of, like, pops out. Oh, I'm really good at the computer. Maybe if I... Uh, 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 it's from all those uh, game playing he did. I guess so. That was actually... that was I put that in my notes. You know, computer hacker who's in good shape, who somehow manages to remember there's a rocket launcher in the back of the bus... And he knows how to load an arm it and shoot it. Yeah, well, I think it's already <laughs> loaded. Well, you know, you play enough video games, Rob. Oh, um, okay, I, I'm so. pretty sure I could tell you how to how to load a, an RPG or a rocket launcher. Because <laughs> Vinny Jones asked that <laughs> I one bet guy. You can't. It's more complicated than so you think. So anybody out there in Internet Land, if you have an RPG that Real Flix reviews, can yeah, borrow, we'd like to review it. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, and you find a helicopter for us to shoot at <laughs> with ammunition, please. <laughs> exactly. If, if if you want to see how bad Ryan Preston can do it, we'll totally you know watch. Oh, Just give me three shots fun. too. I want to tell yeah, you want more than one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I want at least one. <laughs> it should have been at least a Laws instead of an RPG. It would have been better. <laughs> so, oh, <geez. laughs> I'm getting too technical. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, uh, what do you give it, Rob? No, I'm going to give it a four. Um, just because it's pure fun. It's not a five quality movie, It's but it's this one's a scale of four for me because it's fun and I enjoy it. And I could sit here and talk for a half an hour about the movie. Ryan, you're up. Um, uh, three. This is this is a middle of the road, um, good action movie. You know what I mean? Uh, it's 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 sort of what I kind of expect. I I, I could sit here and punch holes in the in the plot. Sure. You know what I mean? And and you know things like that. But uh, you know a bunch of things. Like I said, it, it shouldn't have worked, but a few things elevated it 
such as uh, you know the presence of Don Cheadle and a and a and a good John Travolta. So uh, so yeah, three. James, you know I agree. Uh, three. I mean, there's some fun things with it, but you know it's just one of those that there's too many holes in it for me to get overly excited about. There's a couple things that I think are a little bit off. Like I mentioned Halle Berry's character that, you know, I can't go any farther than that, but I can't take it away because there is a lot of, as Rob said, fun things about this movie. And I mean, literally if the movie had held up to its first opening three minutes, I mean, this movie would probably be a five because that was just out of this world. Right for its time. Or they spent all that. They spent all the money, and you know, so uh, on the like three said, minutes they couldn't yeah, finish they the movie. Really yeah, yeah. On that one thing. Yeah, and you might. That's right. You may be right. They did spend yeah. the time. You know, that, well, like I, I said, mean, they have, they have a lot of they have a lot of shit. They blew a lot of shit up. They had the chopper. You know, in the bus. That that's that's complicated. And not to mention oh, yeah. a bunch of cars in that scene. The budget was eighty million dollars. That's that's not exactly a. Uh, a couple of pennies. And 2001, that's, that's not a lot chump of money. change, man. So, you know, I, I, I agree with everybody. I give this a three. I mean, there's some things that age this movie, but it's just a boatload of fun. And I still, my favorite part in this movie is those explosive vests with the dog collars. Yeah, that was cool. Um, it was cool. Good, you know, even, even, even the it gun was. handling in this movie was pretty good, which is, you yeah. know... Which is still surprising for that era movie. I don't know. I still got to say, you know, Hugh Jackman popping out of that bus with <laughs> that RPG, and I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he knew what end a point first. So that's yeah, true. I, I, you know, I, so it's I, definitely a three to five for it's like me. Like Ryan said, it's a, it's all the video game playing he did. He just knew what to do. <laughs> but but back then they were all pixelated. So you, you know, so how do you know it was a rocket launcher? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. So now's the section of uh, well, did Ryan we do. give his number. Yeah, yeah, three, three, oh, oh three, three, well, three, I three, just, four. Yeah, okay. I'm still with across this one. Do you know right. John Travolta turned down the part of Gabriel a total of six times <laughs> before he changed his mind? Well, thank God he did. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Don't forget how hard they worked to get Holly Berry to show her her. Breasts. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, they had to. Be yeah, really, an it. extra, an extra half a million, a million dollars on yeah. top of an already two million dollar. Uh, uh, coin purse for that yeah, one. Yeah, wow. just to just to do that. And she says when you read her notes, which I thought was kind of humorous, she wanted to get over her fear of being nude in the movies. Yeah, both. That's right. what you know. What for half a million yeah, dollars? Yeah, half a million dollars, man. I I, I I'll, walked that'll... nude through the whole movie. I would. <laughs> make sure I don't ever see that. Movie. It's not a you make know, sure it's not you a picture you want to see, but I'm just first. telling. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm just saying, you know. Oof. Um, so I, next just, I love the scene in the movie too because it was just like, yep, yep, look, here it is, guys. Yep, yep. there's my boobs. There they are. Yeah, I, there was there was no point to it. It was just like, look, we paid her half a million dollars. We're gonna get her to just drop this thing, and, and there it is. <laughs> yeah, there's my boobs. So in the next section of the show is the movie news. Since I picked this for the old guy, the first but new movie news I I I found was ever heard of Terminator Genesis? Yes. Ryan, Rodolfo. is that a thing that exists already? It's a basically it's a reboot of the Terminator series, and it's supposed to somehow bounce Sock. around between the timeline of the first ter film and Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Uh -huh. Looks like they're leaving out the other ones. Hmm. Yeah, but they have Arnold already cast for it. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think we talked about that, this last week. Explain yeah. this old uh, robot. They're just gonna reboot it and be like, "Oh, this is what he's always looked like." Yeah. Yep. Yeah, forget oh, about all the rest. Way to really do it. It's uh. Don't well, worry about his saggy grandpa arms. Bad guy. <laughs> and the other one was probably the saddest news I have heard in a long, long time about a Marvel movie. Guess who everybody's favorite actor might be playing Doctor Strange? Go for it, Johnny Depp. What? Um, I'm surprisingly cool with that. Um, I'm not sure yet. You know, he's oh man, I'm kind of cool with that. I mean, he's not like directing Jeff. this movie, right? I had my heart play. set on Daniel Day Lewis. I'll be completely. Uh, oh, see now that now you're you're reaching too far. No, I'll be that's, that's Daniel too... Day Lewis. I'll be completely surprised that they're going to Jeff, consider, uh, Johnny Depp, considering how much money he cost them in uh, the last movie he is in, which was the um, what was that uh, Lone Ranger. That movie was an epic flop with a huge budget. Well, but it wasn't that movie yeah, almost designed to be a flop from the get-go? 
I mean, it was it was supposed to be like direct to DVD. I never heard one good thing about the movie through production, through casting, through anything. Well, my my no, problem is Johnny Depp plays the same character in every movie now. You know, I yeah. can say you know I'm Captain I'm kind of I'm kind of with Ryan on this. There there's a lot of potential in Depp to do a good job as long as he doesn't act like he normally does. But. I have my heart set on Daniel Day Lewis. See, I just don't think Johnny. I mean, it's too. It's, you're you're reaching for the stars on that one, man. I just they're don't think... stars. They're movie stars. I, I honestly don't but think Johnny Depp. Daniel Day Lewis <laughs> left acting so he could make shoes. Okay. I honestly don't think He's Johnny not Depp. He's going to come back to do Doctor Strange. Come on. I don't think Johnny Depp has a screen presence, honestly, for that character. He's the Sorcerer Supreme. You know, he's the ultimate sorcerer throughout the galaxy. I just don't think he has I mean, the presence of film uh, and screen presence to play As long that as character. he doesn't do it as goofy as he's been doing the past few roles. That's what I'm saying. He as will. long as Tim Burton is nowhere near this, then we're okay. Oh, uh, he'll still act goofy. I really do. Most of his roles since the Sparrow time has... He's been this really quasi, you know, tweaked out character. So I really do think he's gonna be similar. Uh, I don't, I don't know. He didn't do too bad in Dark Shadows. Really? Yeah. I'm kind of anti Depp at the moment. <laughs> and Rum Diaries, he did a good job. So do you? So it sounds like you think he could actually do good at this character. I think he has a potential. I said potential. It does not mean that he can do it. That he's going to do it. He has the potential to do it. So. On the article I read... This but is, I want Daniel Day-Lewis. Well, that's not going to happen. So the funniest thing in this yeah, article... You can pay his bill. Uh, no. <laughs> the funniest <laughs> thing is it said... Can I the, pay it in pennies? Yeah. The funniest <laughs> thing is Johnny Depp meeting, uh, reportedly meeting with Marvel discuss, discuss potential me, uh, of him becoming Doctor Strange. It is the type of casting that fans dream of. No. I'm a fan of Doctor Strange and I'm not dreaming of Dr. Johnny Depp. No, who, who was the other guy that they had for, uh, that they rumored it was supposed to be? It was Daniel day Lewis and another guy, and I can't think of his name right now. The interesting thing is it sounds like he's supposed to be, like, the new uh, Iron Man, since I guess after Iron Man 3, I guess uh, he won't be such a major character. You know, I, I gotta say this, though, is that it's kind of crap that, um, if they're trying to say it that way, because there are not that many Doctor Strange fans that really know a lot about his character and the role that he's got in, in even his background. I mean, the, he's only made a, like a handful of appearances any of, in any of the comics and he's only been a side character in like kind of like their little story yeah. and through Spider-Man. A you'd have of to, and, you'd have to really love his cartoon, his comic books, which is a lot yeah, of, yeah. but they're, they're a little out there. Yeah. They're, they're All out right. there. The, but and the Vin Diesel should play the character. No, no, what? Anyway, uh, moving along. I mean, he hasn't had a show like <laughs> Iron Man, Spider Man, the whole, oh, you know. Um... Okay, so question. Who do you think, besides Daniel Day Lewis, which is probably very rare, anybody else you could think of that would play a good character? No, because they're all shit. See, I actually think it should be a no name actor. Somebody I agree fresh. With that, but, but uh, I mean, uh, I mean obviously, because it's such a big character, you almost need a no name actor so he can disappear into the role. I mean, obviously, people. It's going to be hard to look past just Johnny Depp being some version of Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from somebody like Daniel Day-Lewis, I, I don't know. I think we might be asking too much. But I actually, I think, Ryan, I, this, there's a point there is the fact that the reason why uh, Robert Downey Jr. did such good role in Iron Man, he's, he's practically Tony Stark besides the genius. Right. So I, I, I think if you could find, I, that's why I think a no-name actor is somebody who really, like Ryan said, blends into the character. Just looking at some new movies coming up. Um, yeah, it's kind of a... Yeah. So, Ryan, Sorry, is there we're, anybody we're, you Rob think... Rob and I are moving along. Yeah, this. we're we're already <laughs> looking at other movies. <laughs> so, 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 Ryan, is there anybody who you think would play a good role in that one? Um, I've said my piece. <laughs> uh, man, off the top of my head, I don't know, maybe like Josh Brolin. That's an interesting Josh choice. Josh Brolin? Uh -huh. Really? I was literally off the top of my head, and okay. it's actually not a bad choice. Yeah, actually, yeah, like... it's not. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you do us a favor and check out our Facebook page. Um, is there a movie you'd like us to do, or even a theme you'd like us to do for the month? You know, make, uh, just drop by, tell us a line. You can tell us we're su we suck. We might even read you and ridicule you on air. Most likely we will. So let's stop by. Say hi, please. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> 
And uh, next week's movie, we decided is Three Days to Kill mm -hmm. in the theaters with Kevin Costner. Mm. Looks like an interesting movie, so. We'll find out, won't we? Mm. Apparently he's not a fan already. No. It's but not, I'll watch it and I'll... It's hey, not a, it's give a, a you can't and I would give a good opinion. You it's can't not a three hour movie. movie already deciding it's crap. Yes, we I can. We're that. movie no, 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 I just no. said it's not one that I'm on. So, so, so ladies and gentlemen, excited. then you could oh, be disappointed. Yeah. Damn it, why am I so far from the board to mute him? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I gave the movie Swordfish a three to five. James gave it a three to five. Ryan gave it a three to five. And the old guy who I picked the movie for gave it a four to five. That's Next good. week's movie is straight eight. Three Days to Kill with Kevin Costner, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.